Now the Humane Society of the Pikes Peak region <laughs> is getting set for its annual Puppy Bowl event to coincide with this weekend's big game. Earlier we had that story about the boy and his best friend yeah. the duck and I asked the question, could we get any cuter? Well, Possibly. John Martin is doing it right <laughs> now with a behind the scenes preview of the puppy pandemonium. He joins us now live in the newsroom with more John. Good morning. Good morning, Craig. Good morning, Kimberly. Yes, we all know Peyton and the Broncos are getting set for their showdown with Cam and the Panthers in Santa Clara, but the athletes taking the field at the Humane Society this weekend, way cuter, and we all know that's much more important. Take a look at this behind the scenes look at this year's Puppy Bowl. 10 players, part dachshund, part fluff, 100% adorable. All wild up and itching for action. And then it's really just mayhem. It's, it's team member against team member. It's team member against opposite team member. It's, it's kind of a free for all of puppy fun. There are some rules to keep it from an all out Fido fiasco. We do flag for rough housing, just like in the real game. We also flag for any player who needs to do their business on the field, as you've seen. That duty goes to referee and ground crew member, Andy. They were a hot mess. Um, they're, uh, they came straight from their foster home, which is located in Black Forest. So we kind of anticipated that there was going to be some uh, trouble on the field right away. So we were prepared with our cleaning crew, which was just me. For this year, we're having a little extra problem in that the players like to play with the flag. Coach Brittany is this year's coach and team mom because she happens to be the mother to all 10 of these gridiron growlers offering more than just halftime orange slices. But this game does more than just entertain. You know, we take our job so seriously sometimes, animal welfare so seriously, saving as many lives as we can, that this is a really good opportunity for us to just let the puppies be puppies and have a really good time doing it. It's also meant to educate. Well, of course, I am a huge advocate for spaying and neutering because I do the foster care program. Um, it's a little over 30 puppies, just in less than 30 days that have gone through the foster program this year. And then currently we've got over 40 in foster homes, not including these guys. And uh, we also have a pregnant dog in a foster home and another pregnant dog waiting to get into a foster home. I don't think we're gonna run out of puppies anytime soon. There is no final score, not even a trophy presentation. When the final whistle blows at this puppy bowl, these players just want a new forever home. We just wanted to bring a local puppy bowl here to Colorado Springs. Obviously, we don't have the resources that some of the other puppy bowls have, but we like to do the best we can, and of course, we think we have the cutest puppies. You're darn tootin', that's right. Now, all the proceeds for this year's puppy bowl will go to benefit Nikita, a special dog in need of financial assistance for surgery. You can log on to their Facebook page this weekend to watch the puppy bowl in its entirety, including the kitty cat referee. Ooh. This cat, we left it out because we didn't want to spoil it. It's a dangerous it. job. This cat, they put the cat in the thing with the puppies and the puppies and the kitties were playing. It's remarkable. Uh, my that heart can is be this viewed, morning. yeah, on uh, on their Facebook page, HSPPR, this weekend. Check it out. Again, not the biggest budget, but still, most adorable puppies I've seen this side of the Mason-Dixon. Sure. So 